Sure, when we put modern naval ships side by side with the Titanic, we think we're comparing apples to apples. In reality, it's more akin to comparing great apples to monstrously large pumpkins. The Titanic was, in every sense at the time, a beast of the sea. Clocking in at about 882 feet in length and displacing approximately 52,310 tons, she was the pinnacle of maritime engineering. However, her size pales in comparison to some of the Leviathans cruising our oceans today. Let's take the U.S. Navy's Nimitz class and the newer Gerald R. Ford class supercarriers as prime examples. These are not just ships, they're floating fortresses. They stretch upwards of 1,092 feet, over 200 feet longer than the Titanic, and they displace a staggering 100,000 tons. With over 6,000 personnel on board, they rival the population of small towns in the Pacific Northwest and certainly have more restaurants and amenities than where I'm at in Portland, Oregon. These naval ships aren't just about size. They pack a punch far beyond what size might suggest. The power isn't in their opulent design or their ability to cross the Atlantic. It's in their ability to project force, launch fighter jets, and be a command center for strategic operations. They're termed supercarriers for a reason. They do everything supersized. The Titanic, although large for its time, was a luxury liner meant for passenger comfort and transatlantic travel. These modern naval behemoths, their purpose-built cities geared for endurance, sustainment, and warfighting capabilities. Rather than comparing them to the Titanic, a better comparison might be to the space stations of maritime vessels. They're that advanced. One could argue these ships are less about being boats and more about being mobile, sovereign territories with the capabilities that rival those of small nations. So to answer your question, yes, it's true. Modern-day naval ships do put the size of the Titanic to shame, and they carry within their steel hulls the pulse of a buzzing city.